let's uh, let's get going. Welcome everyone. Um, thank you for for attending. Thanks for signing up and attending uh, on a on a Wednesday night, uh, particularly when the weather's been been quite nice over the last couple of days. Um, I'm James. I'm the sports development manager for Barnet and Southgate College. I've also got uh, Richard Powers from England Boxing uh, on the webinar as well from our partners. So. The way tonight's going to work is uh, Rich is going to start and tell you about the boxing program, specifically about the boxing element of the boxing program, uh, and give you all the information there about the coaches, about the setup, about the exit routes, about how we work with clubs and your, your the boxing in infrastructure, the coaching opportunities, and that sort of stuff. Then I will take over to talk about the college and what courses you can do alongside the program. Um, and more widely about the sports offers and the, the performance programs at the college and the support packages. And then we'll have some time for some Q's, uh, Q and A's at the end, so questions. Um, if you've got, if you think of any questions throughout, there's a Q and A box at the bottom of the screen, a uh, little Q box, that's the Q and A box. Type all your questions into there uh, and I will answer them at the end. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. So anything and everything you can think of, even if you've got a burning question that you want to ask now, just pop it in there. We will endeavour to answer it all at the end. Uh, we're not going to bore you too much and dr drone on for too long. Uh, we'll probably each talk for around 20 minutes in our talks uh, and then the Q&A. So hopefully done and dusted uh, within the hour. Um, so once again, thanks for joining. And I'll now throw over to Richard to share his screen and his presentation. Thanks, guys. Hello all, good evening. I'm just going to go switching over to our PowerPoint presentation for the Boxing Academy. Okay. So, as James introduced uh, um, you to me, uh, my name is Richard Powers, I'm from England Boxing. Um, we started the Boxing Academy and we've been well established at Barnet and Southgate for over six years now. As we go through the PowerPoint, I'll explain to you obviously what we do, um, what we expect from obviously our students and um, what, what we can do throughout the academic year. So the Boxing Academy has been established for six years. We offer a, an eight hour academic programme throughout the week, um, which is on the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, my name is Richard Powers. Um, I've been an England boxing coach for 11 years and have trained and supported several regional and national champions while coaching. I've been working for England boxing for over eight years and have a boxing development as a boxing development officer, a CSO, so club support officer supporting clubs and projects in London and in the Southwest. I've overseen and managed award winning community projects such as the British Lion Hearts in the community across London, working with Olympic and elite amateur boxers. So that's basically about myself. So I've got a vast experience in the boxing uh, from a club coach to the de development side of obviously boxing um, and the experience of projects, uh, academic boxing uh, courses, etc. Um, alongside myself, I have a a really good team that works alongside the Boxing Academy. So the two main people I'm going to introduce you to on the PowerPoint slides are the Academy coaches. So our Academy coaches for uh, Barnet and Southgate College is Dougie John. Now Dougie John's been in sport for 45 years. You wouldn't believe it if you looked at him on the picture there. So 45 years he's been in the sport. Um, he's boxed for several boxing clubs from Rosecroft to White Oak to Penge uh, Boxing Club. He's trained alongside world champions like Duke McKenzie and Glenn McCorry. Um, he's also boxed uh, and, and uh, coached at Battersea Boys down in South London. And he's also set up several of his own clubs with Churchill Gardens in Pimlico. Um, he's joined the Sands End Boxing Team uh, as part of the Police Company Boxing Club of Great Britain and based in Fulham. And he's gained several of his qualifications in coaching. He's now a well um, a well recognised uh, level two boxing coach on the amateur circuit through London. Uh, he's had 15 years working in the academic boxing through schools, colleges, universities and youth clubs. Uh, and he is now the head coach um, at sev uh, sorry, um, several boxing academies across uh, London. And also obviously our main point is Barnet Southgate College. And he is the main lead for our boxing academy. And then we have our assistant. So our assistant is Marcus Stone. So he's an active boxer for Felton Boxing Club in West London. 
Um, he's one of our main coaches. He started the sport at a later age, of the age of 15, and he was referred to him by his coach uh, to attend our Boxing Academy program. Um, he successfully went through four years through our Boxing Academy program, obtaining his qualifications through the Boxing Academy, but also through the college that he chose to get his qualifications. Uh, he's a qualified strength and conditioning uh, trainer, also a personal trainer, and also has gained obviously his BTEC uh, through uh, sports and fitness. Um, he's an excellent uh, coach, um, obviously still an active boxer. So he actually still actually acts, actively boxes on the circuit. Um, so he obviously regards the strength conditioning and, and obviously boxing on the circuit. He knows all the up and coming stuff that's coming around, um, obviously from training himself, but also training others as well. Uh, and his story is a great story because he's come through the academic program and he's part of our team now. So we're actually proud to have him as part of our, obviously, our boxing academy team. So you have myself, obviously Richard, who's a point of contact through obviously recruitment and obviously overseeing uh, courses uh, through England Boxing and you'll see me day to day, uh, not day to day, but you'll see me every so often and you have your main leads, which will be Marcus Stone and Dougie John. So training at the, uh, the Boxing Academy, I said uh, training is a bit of a mixed bag, really. It's exactly what you would do at a boxing club uh, in regards to obviously training inside an environment. So you'll learn obviously your technical work, which will include uh, shadow boxing pad work. Um, it'll be obviously breaking down, obviously, your, your, your understanding of all the punches, um, the defences, the phase attacks, etc. Then we look at a video analysis and techniques, um, footwork. Um, and that's the kind of thing we do, obviously, as, as a Boxing Academy to improve and enhance your skills skills or actually teach you the, the, the basics if you've not boxed before. Um, we also provide physical conditioning. Like I said, um, Marcus uh, is a really, is a, is a great coach. We get around our strength and conditioning, um, plyometrics um, and all, all that kind of stuff through, through obviously sports science that we, we follow. Uh, and he's ideal regards to obviously getting you to a point if you're looking at competition or if there's certain criteria that you want to get into fitness or, or reach a certain goal within obviously the boxing uh, ranks. He's there to help you with that. We obviously look at obviously different types of bag work um, themed bag work um, and obviously using using that to obviously enhance your skills and for you to understand what's going on uh, we also offer sparring as well so sparring it's open to all students that attend the Boxing Academy. But if you do not want to spar, do not wish to spar, it doesn't matter. You, you said, well, see, you don't have to. Um, it's all about, obviously, do you understand in boxing, but you don't have to spar um, if you don't want to. But we do offer the opportunity for sparring and possibly competitions down the line for you guys if you wish wish to do that. And that's on based on the campus. And we do a mixture of sparring. So we have an open spar, we have a condition spar and a technique spar. So a technique spar is all around around about the technique side of sparring. So if we said that we need to work on a certain technique with you, which might be the jab, because we don't think the jab's working too well, then we, we work on obviously sparring using the jab only. Then we have the condition spar, which will give you like condition in the sense that, okay, guys, um, you're fairly new to sparring, you only allow two shots only and that's it and we progress it to three shots so you, there's a certain condition on that sparring and then an open spar is close to sort of a, 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 a sort of competition bout but just usually about 50 percent capacity of regards to obviously um, power etc and they're the three stages of sparring but you can only be signed off if you spar um, at the boxing academy if you're registered with an england boxing registered boxing club and you have to go through obviously all the all the checks regards to licensing medical and being signed off by a doctor um, we can help you with that so if, see, if you are with an england boxing registered club and you're coming to the boxing academy we'll support you and speak to your club coaches um support you regards obviously your licensing and your medical etc if you're not an affiliated member with an england boxing club what we would do is we work alongside you to find a boxing club locally to you um within your borough that we recommend so you could sign up to them or like for example you don't you don't want to spar there's no dramas around that we just go through the process obviously the technical work the bag work the pad work etc from that um so that's like the athlete uh, program. And then we also got the coaching program. So we offer all our academy students the opportunity to gain qualifications through uh, through England Boxing and other in, uh, other sort of NGB partners uh, that offer obviously first aid training, safeguarding, et cetera, to, to basically offer you uh, a, a sort of stepping stone into the coaching pathway. Um, obviously, because if you're looking at obviously studying sport at the college and it might be a BTEC MVQ, it could be a YMCA course, it could be anything within that category. This will help enhance your sporting career by obviously obtaining these coaching qualifications. So with that in mind, what we what we do is we offer you um, 
a fair few qualifications for for a boxing academy there's not many academies that offer uh basically coaching qualifications uh with the boxing uh, with, with academies so what we do is we offer england boxing safeguarding course which every coach in this day and age will have to obtain as part of obviously child welfare so it's a qualification that it must you must have it, it doesn't matter what sport you do it could be basketball it could be football it could be boxing it's a qualification that you need to obtain to, to obviously look at your coaching career we offer you the england boxing uh, boxing mind course which is around mental health obviously with obviously the pandemic that's happened over the the uh, year there's a lot of people suffering in regards to mental health um, and boxing and sport is a good release to, to obviously combat and deal with mental health so the boxing mind course obviously helps you um understand mental health awareness and helps you obviously coach around that and what tools you could use for it through boxing the first aid certificate we give you that and every again every coach needs to have a first aid a current first aid certificate of qualification uh, when you're obviously coaching adults and young people so you know what to do if anything does happen occurs in obviously outside the ring or inside the ring or while you're obviously coaching or, or delivering a sport then we offer you the England Boxing PT Box course and this is a unique course which is for personal trainers uh, so if you're looking at going into the personal training coaching industry this is an ideal course to take on um, on board um, obviously to understand how to do pad work how to deliver a PT session using boxing as a tool and then we've got the England Boxing Leaders Award which is basically a coaching course to show you how to teach to young people so it's non-contact boxing and showing how you can teach non-contact boxing to young people in a in a secondary school a primary school a youth club environment so it's a really good course a lot of fun lead um, team leaders games pad work etc and then we look at the end of our first academic year we'll be looking at the level one course the england boxing level one course which is a coach's assistance course so basically you learn to become an assistant coach so that assistant coach is someone who could help assist run a boxing gym a fully functional england boxing gym and could also assist in regards to competition bouts of the corner people so you have the corner person that can hand up or actually coach in the corner on the obviously the guise of a level two coach assistant uh, and that would be basically what you'll work towards for the whole first academic year some of the courses will may vary you might do them in year two in regards to the safeguard in boxing mind the pt the first aid but what you want to work towards is your level one course for the first academic year and then going into our second academic year we'll be looking at the england boxing level two course now that's a very hard course to obtain and actually get a back-to-back -back from a level one to a level two now a level two course gives you the right to actually run your own boxing gym as a fully functional england boxing coach so the level two course is slightly harder so we obviously let uh, the level two is a bit more work entailed regards to obviously understanding obviously the athlete how to coach the athlete how to obviously get the athlete to a program where they're physically fit how to train them up how to give them nutrition of nutritional advice what to do in a corner what to do regards to different types of sparring and their opponents how to taper down after obviously a big training program and then what to do obviously post event so it's a really good interesting course but that's if you guys want to look into obviously that journey of being becoming a full club coach we do have other cpd courses uh, such as box prevent and ko racism like i said we, we we work with a lot of partners across the board who provide us these courses just to enhance your cv and your journey through becoming uh, a qualified coach or in looking at your pathway into the sporting field with that we also support any athlete that is part of an England boxing program or England boxing club to offer the pathway into the England boxing talent program. So there's a lot of opportunities for any athlete to obviously progress and end up boxing for their own country. Well, England will be England England with this, but there's any other people who have uh, different nationalities, we can work alongside other countries to try and get you through their recognized talent program as well. Um, and how it works is that, um, there's talent camps that um, are open to any athlete that's registered with an England boxing with an England boxing registered boxing card and has had a certain about criteria. So they'll, they'll roughly be looking over a 20 bout criteria, depending on the win win loss rate ratio. So it's usually about 60 40, so 60 percent win, 40 percent loss ratio. And then you'll be invited to these open talent camps to take part, spar, um, and, and obviously understand what's going through the 
um, the pathway program through that. There's also the, the point where you could be scouted. So you could be scouted by any uh, England boxing scout, and that could be from obviously uh, representing at a local club show. It could be someone that um, obviously has heard about heard a lot about you and have attended the, um, your boxing club, or maybe have come down to our academy to have a look at some of the prospects and talent we do have. Um, you also could get picked up through going through the national championships, um, and that could be basically going through your regional rounds to obviously. Um, uh, other region rounds where you you box off and then becoming obviously a national championship round so you with that that's a bit of a hard journey you probably have to box about seven to eight times throughout these championship rounds to to win the national title and if you win the national title title you automatically get asked to go into the talent programs um through obviously the talent office team uh, from that so there's a lot there for you um we we're looking for aspiring young athletes uh, female athletes as well so we've got a, a gb women's development program and england boxing uh well um, women's program as well that's coming about as well so we're looking obviously for both male and female athletes to join the boxing academy and you've got some great support from obviously, the england boxing talent uh, pathway and your boxing academy coaches um, from dougie marquez and i um, as you progress if you do very well with england boxing and you go through the england boxing talent pathway you've got the next step which will be the gb boxing journey so you'll be got you'll be classed as youths as you join the, obviously, the boxing academy and then you've got the seniors um, so with that, it's similar to that. If you do very well through the England Boxing Talent Pathway and you'll see box for England and you go through uh, certain competitions over the, uh, over the world uh, in certain countries uh, and you win a few national titles, then automatically you, you'll probably be picked up for the GB Boxing uh, Programme. And that's where um, it starts to get an interesting in the sense that you could start boxing for obviously GB Great Britain team and that would be through obviously the world, the Olympics, um, possibly the Commonwealth that's joint with obviously England boxing and GB uh, through that. So there's a lot of opportunities through boxing through obviously uh, pathways, but it's all about um, hard work and dedication. It said it does take a lot of hard work and dedication to obviously get through to obviously uh, the GB and the England boxing program, but we're here to support you and we'll try our best to push you through that door. If you're obviously determined to, to go and you've got the drive and determination, we'll, we'll assist you as best we can with that. So with the boxing academy, as, you, as I've spoken about, we we'll see um, what we could offer through coaching, uh, through the boxing academy program, through coaching, and obviously the qualifications we could give you uh, through, through the program, and obviously the talent pathway. We also do a lot of stuff around community community events and projects. So throughout our six years with Bond and Southgate College, we've done some amazing projects uh, within the community. So it's not all about obviously the the. Uh, participation in obviously the, the training and the coaching we also offer you an insight of um, hands-on coaching but also being involved in community events which shows you the greater picture of the sport not just obviously the participation it's all about how an event could go on how uh, a major event would run you guys sometimes will get the opportunity to have that insight uh, through us and um, so on the left hand side was one of our boxing and chemistry students Nico uh, with the uh, camouflage gloves and he was working alongside the world series boxing team uh, which is a bit like champions league football in a way it's best i could describe it so you'll have obviously the gb team and they'll they'll play off in in a, a different uh, le a league table where there'll be about four countries in that uh, league table um and they'll like box italy uh, cuba it could be anyone selected in that draw and then what the top uh, two teams will go into the quarters and then the semis and, and then the finals. So there was roughly about, you're looking about 12 countries across the border or inter, maybe a little bit more varied depending on the entries, etc. cetera. Um, so he got to meet Joshua Biatsu, who's on the left-hand side there with his hands up. And he's coaching him now. Joshua Barretto is a up and coming pro. He's doing very well at the moment. Um, and said he was part of the amateur circuit, but there he was uh, an elite uh, amateur and he's there coaching. And that was funny enough in Covent Garden. So we had a mobile box in the arena where we delivered a community session with our academy students, with the GB team, with a load of press and a load of celebrities coming down to take part in the boxing in the centre of Covent Garden. And that was all run by Barnet and Southgate College, which was really good with our students. Uh, and then on on the right, you've got Goldie, a former boxing academy student who actually works for us now as well. And he is delivering sports sessions in universities, youth clubs and colleges um, online and face to face on that. And that was part of the British Lion Hearts in the community. And that was where he met Joe Joyce down at Peckham. As you can see there, there's me and Dougie with the uh, London Sport Awards, which is the award that we've done for the project with the World Series Boxing British Lion Hearts in the community. Uh, we also done uh, a program over at Bethnal Green opposite um, 
the York Hall, which is the famous iconic place for boxing back in the day, and still is um, for, for boxing and professional bouts and amateur bouts. As you can see there, there's the academy students there delivering a session across the road as part of the British Lionhearts in the community with Coach Dougie. And that was a really good programme alongside, um, obviously, the World Series boxing. In the middle there, we got Coach Marquez. Um, and we done we was actually invited to a unique opportunity to actually promote the DVD release for Creed. Um, as you can see there, the, the, the programme was, uh, for, for the time, is to face off or stand up to Creed. Stand off to Creed. Uh, we got T-shirts, DVD, got to see a VIP screening of Creed uh, when it was released. Um, there was a lot of promo, a lot of uh, social media trend setting, et cetera, in regards to obviously what we did there. Um, and it was quite a unique opportunity to do that. Um, we also done the Vinnie Panzanenza Bleed for this uh, DVD. Oh, sorry, uh, it was actually not DVD. It was actually the premiere for, for the movie. Uh, and we had a few students that were invited at the O2 Arena where they had that launched um, and they got to meet five-time world champion Vinnie Panzanenza. Um, and um, I've got to see the private screen of that. So that was a game for our academy students. So we get unique opportunities like working with the community, promotional stuff, depending on boxing films and, and social media. Um, my favorite picture of all time is this one on the right hand side is an iconic picture of Tower Bridge. Um, and we're outside City Hall uh, where Mayor Boris Johnson um, funded us uh, as part of a program at the time uh, uh, to engage with the community. It was also um, in part, in parcel with the World Series boxing again, the British Lionhearts community, and that again we've set up outside um, with our academy students teaching people from the community how to basically box, pad work, bag work, um, and it was a great opportunity. We had the Ukraine team come down uh, at that time, uh, alongside obviously the GB team um, with some of the boxers that uh, Lance Akoli, um, Sam Maxwell, who are all current now and they've all got um, title belts at the moment, so which really good from there. Um, talking about our partners previously, we do have some amazing partners that support our program. So we have Boxer. So Boxer is a promotional outfit management team. Uh, they do a lot of um, boxing uh, shows on Channel 5 where boxers take part in like a, a quarter, semi and final all in one night um, regards to three rounds each. Uh, and then the winner gets a golden robe. Now, we're proud to say that one of our Boxing Academy students, uh, Mikel Lowell, is a cruiserweight champion and has won the golden robe and he's come through our ranks and programs through the boxing academy um, and he's brilliant he still works with us he still comes down says hello still pops and speaks to some of our students so he'd be ideal to to get on board with that and he's to sign an extended contract with boxer as i said about the british flying hearts in the community and um, part of the gb boxing team we closely work with them so when they box at york hall or anything with regards to london we tend to get heavily involved in the event so inside the event regards to setting up the event being part of that so it could be um it could be a flag bearer it could be someone um gloving them up in in the back room being part of athlete services to actually watching vip tickets ringside and meeting meeting the uh, boxers um a couple of years ago a few of our academy boxers met anthony joshua there um as part of that because he was supporting part of the gb program because he was a former gb athlete we also have obviously uh, Goodwin Boxing, which is part of our recommended uh, management program through boxing. So if you are an amateur boxer and you've done your amateur career um, and you're looking at obviously going into a professional ranks, um, Goodwin is a, a preferred partner and they look after us regards to obviously having uh, boxers coming down, talking to some of the students with their title belts. Um, also providing a load of free tickets at York Hall Bethnal Green. So watching free boxing. Uh, alongside obviously meet and greet uh, and obviously Q and A's with some of them as well online from Steve Goodwin as a manager to, uh, to obviously some of the boxers talking about obviously their career, some refer obviously uh, professional referees, professional coaches. We get all that insight for the academy and we can use that uh, with with obviously um, the, the program. We also work in partnership with Boxing Science, which is a, a, a new program that provides the new age in boxing training. So all boxing science regards of plyometric, ballistics, um, or strength conditioning. Uh, and that's an ideal program that Marquez and Stucky are on now. So they, they, they study this as part of obviously the academy uh, and they bring all the new age equipment and the new age ideas of how to obviously get to 
to be the best athlete through boxing and boxing science from that. We also work alongside London Boxing. Now, London Boxing governs, uh, on behalf of England Boxing, London Boxing Clubs. So they were established in 2016. I was the founder of London Boxing um, when, it, when, when we established it in 2016 um, as part of the new England Boxing regime. Um, there's about 109 uh, registered England Boxing Clubs across the uh, 33 boroughs, including the City of London. So there's 33 boroughs, um, including the City of London. Um, and there's probably, I'd say, three or four boxing clubs per borough. So there's a load there for obviously people to join. So with our partnership there, we do a lot of stuff helping them through the championships. Um, so it might be just a local boxing club might need some help. We could offer assistance. It might be where they're looking at obviously doing boxing shows uh, for the regional rounds. We, we help them with assistance. And we also get to see a lot of boxing through the regional rounds. So we get free tickets and support, et cetera, from that. So that's me regards to my PowerPoint um, for the Boxing Academy side, I'll hand it back over to James and hopefully we'll have some questions after James' presentation. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Richard. Uh, oh, hopefully my camera's, there we go, coming back on. Uh, let me just share my screen now. And if I go there. Okay, so Rich, give you a full insight into uh, the boxing side of things there. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the college and, and sport and how it fits in with the boxing and what you can do. And I've had a little brief look at some of the questions coming in. So hopefully I'll be able to answer them from within this presentation. It will be all become clear, but I have to answer them within um, uh, afterwards as well. So uh, just firstly, when we say the BSC Bears, that the sort of brand logo the um, identity for all the sport programs at, uh, at college at Barnet Southgate College so it's uh it's taking that American collegiate feel and trying to bring all the different sports together under one um, identity as such now different sports buy into it in different ways um, boxing is actually one of the ones that probably do buy into it a bit more than the others um, clearly with some of the other sports the NFL Academy Tottenham Hotspur men and women we don't they don't tend to use it at all really so they've got their own strong identities but it's trying to bring everyone together under one uh, one banner as such so who are we so bsc is the sports department uh, for barnett southgate college um we are one of the largest sports departments in the uk certainly in london and one of the most successful uh, in the uk as well and how do we quantify that uh, that success statement but well, it's based on three main things. One, the volume and amount of learners that we have associated with sport at the college, be that either studying sport academically or being a student athlete uh, and doing sport alongside their course. Two, the amount of sports programs we have, uh, which I'll come on to in a minute, and different sports levels of sports provision we have. And three, uh, the amount of success we've had in terms of team titles, individual titles, national, regional, you name it, um, but also progressing students into uh, improved levels within the sporting infrastructure. So be that higher education, high levels of sport, uh, American scholarships or professional sports, whatever it might be, we've got a really strong and long track record of, of delivering on that. In terms of the current academies we have at Southgate, we have the Tottenham Hotspur male football program, the women's female, the, the female uh, football program as well, which links in with the WSL Academy. We have the NFL Academy, of course. We have the Lee Valley, the athletics program that's based out of Lee Valley, uh, an England boxing program, as we are learning about tonight, uh, the Wimex Tennis Scholarship uh, Package Academy, uh, a basketball academy, and a leadership program for those students who study sport but don't. Uh, fit into one of those academy pathways um, to be within the academies you don't have to study a sports course uh, you can do other course areas but particularly in the boxing most of the student athletes and most of the boxers certainly are studying a sports department qualification in other in the other academies uh, a lot more might be doing something like a levels or maybe business or creative media perhaps um, but uh, in boxing, it really lends itself to studying a sports qualification more because of the, the type of learning and the, the way it complements the coaching and, and 
probably the motivation of the, the student athletes we have within the boxing 90 to 95 percent probably do a sports department qualification but you don't have to but i'll come on to that in a minute um Barnet and Southwick College is spread across North London in various delivery sites. So we have the Southgate campus, uh, we have the Wood Street campus in High Barnet, and we have the Collindale campus over in the west of Barnet. What you study dictates which campus you will be based at. So the Southgate campus is the predominant base for the sports department. Uh, the Wood Street campus is the base for A-levels. The Collindale campus, for example, is the base for hair and beauty or construction or something like that. So different curriculum areas have provision at different campuses. Um, and which, you, which curriculum area you're involved in dictates where you study for your, for your course. But the, the sports element is always delivered out of the Southgate campus. So the boxing, for example, takes place in sports or at the Southgate campus. So if you are studying at another campus, you have to make your way to the Southgate campus for training, although we do put on transport uh, on two of the boxing days um, from Wood Street to Southgate. And when we say the sports department, that encompasses everything from the teaching staff to, to my side of the department, the enrichment team. So we're all together in one big sports department. It's not like a uni where the academic sports and the sports development sports are split. So how does it work? So when you come to Barnet and Southgate College and do something like the Boxing Academy, you'll be on something called a study programme. So that is a combination of ingredients that come together to form what you do in your college life as such. So the main aspect is clearly your main qualification. So as I mentioned, that's either a BTEC Sports or an MBQ in coaching or a YMCA in personal training or an A-level package, three A-levels. Uh, or a BTEC in applied science, whatever it might be, whatever course that you pick to do, that's your main component. On top of that, you have the academy. So in this case, the boxing program um, and the training and the, and the, the delivery that Richard's already gone into uh, for that. So that's another component. You have your English and maths that you have to still study if you don't achieve your grade four uh, in English and maths in your GCSEs or if you a few years ago, if you stopped them a few years ago, if you haven't achieved that grade four, you have to still do your English and maths. Uh, depending on what course you're doing, there's an element of work experience that you'll have to do. Um, it varies in hours, but and it varies on what course you're doing, but there's work experience as part of that as well. And then we have your tutorial and pastoral package program. So um, the learner services delivering sessions on financial stuff on, on knife crime whatever it might be business side of things and then your tutors in your course area having your tutor sessions making sure you're you're on track to succeed so that's all your study program while you're at the college um, to deliver the academy programs we partner with some really in industry leading bodies to deliver the programs and for a lot of them we go off site to utilize some great facilities to base them out of but in the case of the boxing program as Richard's alluded to because it's we have the sports hall we have the um, the portable ring which we take up and down the sports hall has been fitted with brackets so we have all the punch bags up uh, and other pieces of equipment and then they utilize the NFL academy gym a little bit for the SNC as well uh, that's the only one of our academies which is based uh, purely on site. What I always say is a real strength of the offers we have at, uh, at the college and within the academies is the staff, both within the college staff and also in our partners. Um, Richard's already talked about the bios of the people associated with the boxing programme from, from his side of things uh, and the experience and the knowledge and the contacts uh, and the professionalism, the professionalism that they bring with them. Uh, from our side of things, a lot of our staff at the college have either worked in industry and then come into the college or we're all still working in industry now alongside our main roles within the college. So I myself work for the Premier League, working with uh, the football academies in the in the Triple P system. I also work with some of the first teams in the Premier League now. Um, we have currently practicing high level semi-professional coaches, uh, level five personal trainers, sports rehabilitators, strength conditioning coaches, um, former council sports development managers, and Jack Dimitri, who's the current England C team physiotherapist, heads our physio clinic, and he's also a lecturer uh, in the sports department as well. So a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge that all comes back to uh, try to improve our packages and what we do at the college within our 
within our means. So what are we preparing you for when you come onto these programmes? It's quite simple. You're here to get your qualification, your vocational qualification or your academic qualification, whatever it is you're studying. But we're preparing you for your next step. So that could be university, that could be into employment, that could be into professional sport, hopefully for some people. Um, whatever that next step is for you and what's within your grasp, we're trying to prepare you for that. And that's both in the classroom, in the, the gym and in the ring. But, uh, for the boxing element um, and outside of those those two places as well so it's developing those life skills becoming independent becoming a responsible adult managing your time um, developing certain character traits and behaviors that will stand you in good stead for life these are some of the partners that i mentioned earlier to run our various programs all the academies run in a very similar way in terms of, as I mentioned, embedding that training in a games program uh, into your study program. In the case of boxing, there's no games program, there's no fixtures, for whatever better word, no bouts as such as, as a program, because that's all done through the club system. So your championships that Richard's already mentioned, um, boxing isn't uh, an association of college sport, they don't have sort of team fixtures. But as Richard's mentioned, we would try and those of you who are not already situated within clubs, we try and get you situated within clubs, you heavy medical, etc. And we, you try and get you belting um, outside of the college. So this is a training program. This is to add to your club training program. And, you know, if you're doubling your training quantity per week, um, you're going to become a better boxer. Um, but with the boxing, yes, it's it's the Tuesday afternoons, the Friday afternoon for two hours each, and then the Wednesday for, for a total of four hours at the moment. So lots of ex additional opportunity to to train and get those get that boxing work in under the coaching staff. So Richard's uh, mentioned some of the history there already. It's we're in our sixth year. Um and he's mentioned some of the, the individual success stories and some of the some of the um opportunities that the boxing program has had uh, and some of the stats there um so i won't dwell too much on it already um we're really uh, safe to say the, the last point there we're really looking to uh, and always looking to increase our relationship with the clubs out there so i've mentioned about uh facilitating those of you who are not already with a boxing club to a boxing club to complement what you do with us at the college um but also developing those relationships with the coaches at these clubs. So if you're already at a club, yeah, it's not taking you away from that environment. It's adding to that environment. So we'll work with your coaches so that if, for example, that coach wants you to work on something specific with us, we'll try to do that, leaving them free to work on something else whilst you're with them. So you're you're getting a real package um, and almost yeah, nearly a full time athlete package. Yeah, really, if you're already at a club. Uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but this is essentially how we um, develop uh, the curriculum at the college for the various programmes. If you're interested in finding out more in depthly about the curriculum areas uh, in terms of what you can study in the courses, on the Barnet Southgate College website where you would have registered for this virtual open day, you can go and watch back the um, talks that we had in the start of March. So every curriculum area delivered a talk. So if there's a particular one that you're interested in watching, go back, watch that talk um, and find out from that curriculum manager or that teacher how they build their curriculum and um, what they do for you in that course. So I mentioned uh, with the boxing programme, the vast majority of the student athletes on it do a sports department qualification. Um, so within the sports department, these are the academic pathways and options that we have so in terms of the BTECs we do BTECs ranging from level one up to level three and level three extended diploma so where you come in is dictated by what grades you achieve in your GCSEs or if you've already done your GCSEs some time ago what you're studying now so what entry criteria you're coming in with dictates what, where you start at so if, you, if you're coming in with just two GCSEs of any qualification of any level um, that's your level one introductory diploma in sports. So that's the lowest level we do, that's the entry level. Uh, that's a one year qualification. So if you're starting there, the idea would be to do that for a year, get a good grade, move up, to, and in the second year to do the BTEC level two. Uh, if you're managing to come straight in at the BTEC level two level, you must have either, you must have four GCSEs, grades nine to three, 
uh, or have done the level one somewhere else. Um, so the level two is a one year qualification also. And if you have a good year, get a merit or distinction grade in that, you can move up to the level three or level three extended diploma. The level three extended diploma is the highest level of academic qualification that the source department offer. So the extended diploma is a 3A level equivalency course. The level three diploma is a 2A level equivalency course. They're both level three courses. The difference being is you do more modules in the extended diploma, something like 18 versus 12, hence why it's worth more UCAS points. Um, the level three and level three extended diploma are two year qualifications. OK, so the entry requirement for the level three diploma, the 2A level equivalency diploma is five GCSEs, grades nine to four. And the entry requirement for the level three extended diploma is six GCSEs, grades nine to four, including maths and English. So the key message there is whatever you achieve or awarded, I should say, this summer from your teachers, whatever it is, whatever grades it is, there is a course for you at Barnet Southgate College alongside the boxing. It's not a case of I've applied for I've applied for the level two, I've not got the grades, I can't come. You would just be offered the, the course that is appropriate to the grades that you've achieved. Okay, so whatever you achieve, whatever you're gonna get, we have a course for you. And this is replicated across most of the curriculum areas. We also have uh, some more vocational routes in sports. So we have the level two MVQ certificate and activity leadership, which is a coaching qualification. So it's much more practical. It's about going into schools, community events, building up a portfolio of work um, and evidence, and then learning some underpinning knowledge about activity leadership and coaching at the college, but learning by doing essentially and, and getting your hands dirty and delivering sessions. Uh, that's a one year qualification, so one year in duration, uh, and the entry requirements for that are four GCSEs, grades nine to three. We also then have the level two YMCA diploma in personal training and gym instruction and the level three YMCA certificate in personal training and gym instruction. So they're industry specific quals. They are specifically for if you want to go into becoming a personal trainer or gym manager. Unlike the BTECs uh, and the others, you have to start at the level two. You can't go straight into level three, regardless of what grades you've got, because it's like a coaching badge. You can't go straight into being a level three boxing coach. You have to do your level one, level two. So you have to start at the level two YMCA. And to get onto that, you need five GCSEs, grade nine to four, uh, at, uh, and or the BTEC level two certificate in sport at a merit grade. That's a one year qual. Do that for a year. You could then move up to the level three YMCA certificate in personal training and instruction. Once you've got the level three YMCA, you're a fully qualified personal trainer, able to go out, get a job as a gym manager, launch your own business, personal training, take clients um, and you're good to go. These courses are great. But what I would say about them is if you're looking to go to university, it's not the route for you. You have to, these won't get you to university. These are very specific to employment. What some it's worth bearing in mind what some students do is they might if they come straight in at the level three B tech, but they after that two years they don't want to go to university or they don't want to get a job yet. Some might then do the YMCA level two or the MBQ uh, and get that third year with us and be on the boxing program. The YMCA qualification also works really nicely with boxing. Clearly, things like boxing, boxer size is a big part of um, the fitness industry. So it works really nicely in terms of the knowledge that you would gain if you wanted to go down the boxing coaching route. If you want to do A-levels, we've got a real extensive range of A-levels you can pick from. Uh, not many we don't offer. Um, and the entry requirements for the A-level department are six GCSEs, grades nine to four, including maths and English. And they generally like grade sixes in the courses you want to study. There are interviews conducted in the A-level department. If you've started A-levels elsewhere, you can come uh, and finish your second year with us, providing that the awarding, exam awarding bodies match and the module delivery matches. Um, you could also come and restart your A-levels with us if you've started them elsewhere, but you want to start again. But you can't restart level two. So you can't, uh, year two, sorry. You can't have done two years somewhere else and retake your, your second year with us. Um, as I mentioned, there's other course areas available at the college. You can go onto the college website, have a look around. But if you do choose to do something outside of the sports department and A-levels and business, we're opening out business now at uh, certain academic levels. There's a chance that you some of your lessons will clash with the training. So 
to guarantee availability for training, sports is the best route to go down, perhaps A levels and perhaps business. So you might have seen the uh, TAS dual career logo earlier. So just a little brief thing on what TAS is. So TAS stands for Talented Athlete Scholarship Scheme. Um, essentially, it services and works with talented athletes aged 16 to 24 and in education. So um, international, national, regional level athletes in any sport. Uh, TAS is a, is a platform, a service, a, a scheme that looks to support those level of student athletes. At the top end, it works through the NGBs and the universities. They launched a scheme a couple of years ago called the Dual Career Accreditation, which essentially accredits and awards uh, schools, colleges or unis, which are known to be experts in managing talented athletes in education. So we were the first FE college in the country to have it. Um, and it means that we have a talented athlete policy. We provide additional support workshops for the talented athletes through King's College London. Um, their, their TAS uh, support services, so things like nutrition, uh, an anti-doping workshop I provided this year during COVID, they were doing some remote fitness classes for the TAS athletes. Um, psychology, cook-alongs, you know, all these sort of holistic experiences that help um, support talent and athletes while they're in education. And the idea is to try and take the pressure off the talent and athletes. So JJ there um, is one of the TAS athletes in boxing. Um, but say you were, you know, in one of the England talent camps that Richard mentioned earlier, you would be a TAS athlete. So if you need to go away to a talent camp, the college wouldn't be telling you, no, you can't go. You go. Here's some work for you to do while you're there. You can maybe dial into your lessons remotely. Uh, when you're back, let's catch up. So try and make sure that you can achieve in both your education and your sport. We have a physio clinic at the um, at the college, as I mentioned earlier. So any niggles, any knocks, any injuries, you expect to go and get treatment uh, at our clinic, and that's free for all the student athletes. And um, we have two gyms at the Southgate campus. So the NFL Academy gym, um, which, as I mentioned, the boxers do go in there with Marquez uh, to do some S&C. And we have the original gym, which is free entry for students, and you can have a program with them for you, and Emily can work with you uh, to support you uh, in that regard there. Um, the transport, we do put on transport for students, but uh, like I mentioned, that's not really necessary with the boxing because it's all on Southgate campus. But if you're based at Wood Street and you need the help with transport to get to Southgate, that is provided. So just finally from me, what do we expect from you? What's our standards? Well, four things. Turn up, turn up on time, apply yourself and meet your coursework deadlines. And if you do those things, well, you'll have a great experience. You'll get a lot out of your period. Uh, at the college and in the boxing academy because there's a lot of time a lot of money a lot of thoughts uh, knowledge experience professionalism invested into these programs to give you these amazing opportunities uh, that have been discussed today but if you don't do those things then we start to have an issue the academics come first if you're not doing what you need to do in the classroom with your coursework then you'll start to have those opportunities taken away from you. You'll have to attend catch-up sessions. You might be told to not attend training because you've got to go into the classroom and finish your work. It's a really, really big part of being a student athlete that you should succeed in your course because certainly in some of the sports, particularly those who are looking to go to America for the NCAA, if you haven't got your academics, you're not going there. It doesn't matter if you're the best athlete in the world, you're not going there. And more and more, particularly in the Olympic sports, that task, that dual career stuff is coming more and more into it. There's, that's a, it's a way for um, more support to be provided to talented athletes by keeping them in education. So college in our instance, university, even through some of those um, in the boxing performance programmes that, that Richard mentioned, it's all linked to education. So um, academics are, are a huge priority. Yeah, and that is me. So. Uh, I said any questions there. Just before I move on to the questions, there's some um, uh, social media accounts uh, that you may wish to follow uh, to keep up to date with some of the things at college, sports related. Uh, my email address is displayed there as well as the sports trials one. If you haven't applied to the boxing programme, um, Nick will put in the chat, if he's not already, in the chat box, uh, the link to the sports registration page. 
so you can apply for it through there and that way we can um, keep you up to date with when we can next have our next practical day so I invite you in to actually get on the pads maybe get in the ring and let's see you box and you can see us coach a little bit um, so Nick will put that within the chat for you uh, if you've applied for it already don't need to do that again okay so it's just if you have if you haven't applied for it yet so I will stop sharing my screen. Richard, you can unmute yourself and turn your camera back on. And we will go to the questions. We've got a few, quite a few. Um, so the first one is, uh, is, the, is that boxing club before in college? Not sure. I mean, I think you mean in, are the session times before college. Um, session times are Tuesday afternoons uh, this year and previous six years. Session times have been Tuesday afternoons, Friday afternoons uh, for a couple of hours each, one thirty till three thirty or one till three, uh, and then we do four hours on a Wednesday at the moment. We may look to change that to split two and two to another day next year. Um, but the four hours on a Wednesday have been split two in the gym, two in the classroom, doing some of the coaching stuff. Anything to add on that, Rich? No, you it said it's a, it's a variety. So there's a bit of practical and theory. So obviously the four hour session, you're not doing four hours of boxing uh, training. It's split into two sessions where it might be strength and conditioning for the first part and then maybe video analysis, um, looking at boxing bouts, looking obviously at um, active boxing. So for example, if there's any Olympic boxing on, we go watch that. So it's a mixture all really. So from that. Great. Um, Next question, what should I do after this meeting? Have dinner, maybe? Um, yeah. <laughs> Watch some TV? No, um, I'm joking. Uh, I, I think you're referring to um, the next steps after this meeting. So as I mentioned, if you haven't applied to the boxing program, within the chat there is the link. Um, apply to it, and that means that we will get in touch with you to let you know when our next practical day is for you to come and hit pads. We were just discussing it before we started this webinar. So we're waiting on confirmation from the government about when we can have um, our next, uh, when, when we can get you in the gym, uh, hitting some pads and, and, and so forth. Then um, also I would apply to your academic courses through the website. And again, if it's not already in the chat, Nick will put in where to find the academic course, course applications. You can apply for as many courses as you want. Um, it's just an application. Um, and that way you're in the college system and you'll get regular updates through both channels about what the next steps are. Um, hopefully that answers your, your question. Um, yeah, I don't think I've missed anything there. Richard, any, have I missed no. anything there? No. no. Um, how can we understand if we are already in the college? Well, I mean, I, I guess it depends if you've applied. Um, so if you've applied for your course, you should... Uh, I've had communication, or you will shortly, depending on when you applied, regarding a conditional offer or an interview. Um, and then the admissions department will follow up with those next steps about what it involves. Uh, make sure you keep checking your emails, including your junk, just in case things get sent into the junk folder accidentally. But there's two strands. There's the admissions to the academic side, and then there's the boxing side. So the boxing side is all done through Richard and myself. So We'll invite you into the practical days and um, we'll communicate, you know, offering you places through that. Um, but then obviously you have to be a student, so you have to do the admission side as well. OK, next question. Um, I'll change the wording of this slightly. Um, but it, someone's done Kung Fu boxing before getting injured I think they're now recovering they've done a different course in level three catering interested can I become a higher level what time and date and lesson good I, I'm really not sure of the question here but I think I've answered some of those questions within the presentation is asking about how long when's enrollment how long's for the course so the, the course is as long as you've enrolled academically at the college so if you're on a level three BTEC, you're doing two years with us, both in the in the course and in the boxing. So the boxing lasts as long as you're a student at the college. Um, and in terms of when enrolment is, 
uh, if you're definitively on GCC results day is main enrollment opens, but we're looking, the admissions department, I know are looking at ways that we can open out enrollment slightly earlier than that, um, or partial enrollment. And it depends if you've already got your qualifications. So hopefully that answers that one. <clears throat> Will there be trials for the academy? I wouldn't call them trials as such. I, we call them practical days because boxing is an individual sport. We can cater for a range of levels. And so we can cater for a national champion in the same way we can cater for someone who's, you know, just finding their feet, early steps of boxing. I'm sure that's the same at boxing clubs up and down the country, you know. Um, so I wouldn't call them trials as such, but practical days, certainly. And we're waiting to see when we can next hold the next one because of COVID. Richard, do you want to add to that? Yeah, so hopefully we'll be looking possibly uh, the announcement in uh, April the 12th onwards. So we will keep you posted uh, from from there. Um, with regards to obviously our open days, is a mixture of meeting the team, uh, having a conversation to get to know a bit about yourself and us. Um, we do a bit of mixture of pad work, some bag work, a movement around the ring, um, just just general stuff like that. So we know where we could start from with you guys and obviously what we could look and work with from there. Um, we're open to anyone coming on who's interested in boxing. So you don't have to be an active boxer. You'll be someone that's interested in boxing, interested in coaching, uh, or you could be a current national champion, which we've had all, all these come through the door. So we're there and open to anyone that is interested. So. Okay. Um, Ethan White says, um, I have already been in junior championship semi-finals, but did not box due to COVID. Is that course, is this course still suitable? So a hundred percent. Yes. You are, you're exactly the kind of, uh, candidate that we are looking for. Richard, you? Yeah, yeah. Just, just wondering what boxing club you box for, Ethan. That'd be interesting to know. Um, it said, well done for getting free to them stages. Unfortunately, COVID did ruin it for a lot of people for that journey. Uh, hopefully, you'll you'll be back on board doing it for the, the new boxing season, which will start in September, hopefully, with uh, the competition. Um, so, yeah, I, we're, we're there to support you through your journey uh, as an athlete. We work closely with all your London boxing coaches um, from there. It's only going to enhance your skills, we believe, we're having an eight-hour through curriculum boxing and adding your uh, boxing training. It's only going to enhance you as an athlete. So. Well done for getting that far. Brilliant. Um, Brody Shell says, I've applied for a foundation course by mistake. Sorry. Uh, I applied for a foundation course by mistake. Is there any way I could change the course? Yeah, you can apply for as many courses as you like, Brody. It really doesn't matter. Um, so log back in through your portal. Um, and keep on applying for whatever course you want to do. You know, you can apply for 10 courses ranging from level one to level three extended in four different department areas. It really doesn't matter. Or ultimately, it only matters what you enroll onto. Uh, and that will be sorted at enrollment. And you can decide there and then. And it's based on what grades you've got. So um, you can absolutely change your course. It's just an application. Apply for as many as you like um, and uh, yeah, make your decision when you have the most information. Um, Harriet Kerens says, I'm an amateur boxer at Boxport London. Will this and being part of the Barnet Southgate Boxing Academy make me a better chance to fight professionally? Well, it will certainly make you a better boxer. Um, Richard, do you want to say that one? Yeah, it will help definitely um, go towards, obviously, your, your amateur career um, and enhancing your skills. Uh, and then we could, if you are looking at that professional uh, outlet, we can introduce you to, obviously, a good management team or a good professional out, um, outlet, which would be Goodwin or any others, really. So we'll help you and support you through that journey. So um, obviously through the academic side, but post-college as well, we're here to support you from, from that career. So we'll always be around to, to guide you as best we can uh, and advise you as best we can. So we work alongside, obviously, your coaches, like I said, but also your future coaches as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I said, just just coming to this academy will helpfully enhance your skills um, as an amateur boxer. And therefore, if you do very well as an amateur boxer, there'd be a lot of people knocking on your door uh, as a professional uh, outlet. So hopefully we could guide you there as well. Yes, uh, and, and yeah, I would agree with that. And uh, all I would add is, is um, what I say with all our various academy programmes, I, I will never sit here and guarantee to any applicant coming in that we're going to make you a professional in any of the sports because I can't guarantee that you know we've never seen you box or, or play the sport whatever someone's applying to 
and even then there's so many variables that can happen um you know would i like would i is an ambition for someone who's been part of our program to to box in the olympics absolutely 100 percent, and then turn professional 100 percent, and we love that um and that is definitely a, a metric of success and a target but also a metric of success is people joining clubs and bouting and getting better uh getting coaching badges and seeking employment through the sport um achieving their qualifications uh, academically in the college uh, getting into universities these are all success stories so yes that's a great ambition but we can't promise you it because that's mostly that's down to you all we can all we can promise is what we're going to offer you to support you while you're at the college um and uh yeah so um that looks like all the questions uh that we've had so uh yeah i think i think we've covered everything richard is anything you'd like to finish on i'll just pick up on ethan he did send something so he said hoddardson yeah i know Seb Leo yeah. really well your boxing coach really good boxing club buddy so you're in safe hands there so yeah no great to have obviously someone from hot uh, well hot box they're called uh abbreviated but yeah well done buddy um so yeah, no, it's a it's a pleasure, obviously, obviously um, presenting to you guys all, and obviously having these questions. So please feel free. I've obviously texted you and emailed you uh, over the course of yesterday and today. Feel free to obviously text me or email me if you've got any more questions we may have missed. Okay, guys. Fantastic. So thank you for taking your time. Do apply to the program, and we'll be in touch about um, practical days as and when we know more. So good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining. Take care. Take care, guys.